You've asked virtually three questions. <laughs> Smuggled two, two questions. Okay. The 24 hour economy is not going to be one night event. It is a process and it's voluntary. On the part of government, we have what we control. For instance, we can ask customs to start a process of working 24 hours because customs is a state agency. We can ask the ports to work 24 hours so that people can clear their goods at any time in the day or the night. Anything to do with state agencies, we can do 24 hours because we control that. With regards to manufacturing and businesses, it is voluntary. You cannot go and compel people and say, by this date, you must start working three shifts. So you have to give them incentives. And those incentives will be to give them maybe low interest loans so that they can expand their production and take on more uh, 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 people. It could also be in the form of tax waivers so that they have less taxes to pay and so they can plow that amount of money into expanding their production. It will also be finding markets outside so that they can engage in export uh, uh, trade under the African trade, uh, continental and free trade area, under the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme, under our agreements with uh, America in AGOA, under our agreements with the EU, so that we can improve our exports based on an increased demand. And so it's not going to be an overnight thing that it would happen like a flashbang, but we will start the process. And it is our hope that we will go far within the four years and any government that comes can continue the policy and go and run with it. <laughs> Ghana is the only country I know so far that is being taxed for a pandemic that has passed. We who suffered and were the victims are being punished for a pandemic that came and went. We survived the pandemic and they say, no, you must pay tax. And so, COVID tax was introduced. But let me tell you, COVID is a value-added tax. And a COVID tax was introduced because government needed to increase revenue. Now, let me explain to you. And that's why when somebody comes and he says, when I come, I'll abolish these taxes, and so on and so forth. The question you ask him is, why don't you do it now? He cannot do it now because this government has agreed with the IMF and added COVID tax as one of their revenue handles. It's part of the IMF agreement. And so, as part of their agreement with the IMF to increase revenue, they've locked COVID inside. And so if you come and you want to take the COVID tax out, then it means that the IMF bailout, you have um, not been able to fulfill the agreements with the IMF. And that is why he says, oh, vote for me. When I come, I'll remove this tax. But the question is, if you could remove it, you do it now, but you can't do it because you've agreed with the IMF that COVID tax is one of your revenue measures. IMF has asked you to increase your revenues to a certain percentage of GDP by 2028. And so far, you are at about 15 point something percent. You are nowhere near the 24 percent they've asked you to uh, increase it to. We are saying that we'll rationalize those taxes because there are other areas in which we can collect taxes. There are other areas in which we can expand the tax net so that we can take those obnoxious taxes out. One of the taxes that is not performing is e-levy. E-levy, they said, will solve every problem in this country. Unfortunately, e-levy is not performing well. It's bringing in just about one point something billion CDs. And so some of those obnoxious taxes, you can substitute them. For instance, property taxes. We're not collecting property taxes well enough. If we're collecting property taxes, we'll get maybe 10 times what we are collecting in e-levy and in COVID tax. And so those are areas that we want to look at. Apart from that, let's spread the tax net. I live in my house. Every day, electricians come and work, and I pay. Plumbers come and work, I pay. Air conditioning technicians come and service my air conditioners, I pay. And they charge quite meaningful sums. 
One day they brought me a bill, and I said, ah, maybe I'm in the wrong profession. If I was uh, an artisan, I mean, you're charging me 5,000 for just this. So if me too, I was repairing people's things and I was getting 5,000, 4,000, 2,000, 3,000, maybe I'll be earning more money than the profession in which I am. But when you pay, who takes tax from that person? You must find a way of spreading the tax net so that when you pay him that 2,000, at least he too, some 100 CDs or 200 CDs will go to government. And so how we can spread that tax net is what we are apprised of. And if we're able to do that, it will reduce the tax on everybody because then we can throw away all the other taxes that are killing business and making it difficult for them to get, uh, for people to get employment. And then your last smuggled question, NHIL. NHIL has a list of drugs that it is supposed to cover. And the list of drugs cover the basic uh, 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 sicknesses that are uh, allowed on the N NHIS. Unfortunately, it's not working properly because even the normal claims that the facilities are putting, NHIL is not refunding those claims. One, because government of Ghana has capped the NHIL. There's something they call the capping and realignment uh, uh, act. And so any statutory fund that reaches a certain percentage, the excess money goes into the contingency fund. So NHIL is not getting the full amount that should go into it. So they are finding it difficult to recompense the health facilities for the treatment they are giving NHIL card, card holders. And so because of that, they also cannot provide the drugs. You are lucky if you go and you get amoxicillin. You are lucky if you go and you get analgesics. You are lucky if you go and get cough syrups. In some places, they just let you see the doctor, write a prescription for you. You go to the pharmacy, they say there are no drugs, and you have to go to the uh, uh, outside pharmacy to buy it. And so when we come, we will uncap the NHL so that the full amount Ghanaians are paying as national health insurance levy will go into the fund so that we can reinvest the hospitals to be able to give the treatment that they are required to give.